where, where are we going? What, what, what do we want to do? Um, and, uh, I, to, to me, the uh, the end game of this, meaning that uh, here, here's where we can say that we've actually understood the problem, solved it, and, and so on, is this notion of an anatomical compiler. Someday, you should be able to sit down in front of a computer and draw the animal or plant that you want. Um, not at the level of molecular components, but the actual anatomy that you want, such as, for example, here, I want this three-headed flat one like that. And if, uh, if, if this system existed, and if we knew what we were doing, we would be it would be able to compile your, uh, your anatomical description into a set of stimuli that would have to be given to these cells to make them build whatever you want them to build. Now, the, the, this is, this, this, uh, is, is of, of huge practical importance because if we were able to do this, if we were able to uh, convince a group of cells to build whatever we wanted them to build, most problems of biomedicine would go away. So birth defects, traumatic injury would be regenerated, reprogramming cancer, um, aging, degenerative disease, all these things would go away if we understood how to communicate anatomical goals to collections of cells. And that's why the actual solution to this kind of thing is not a 3D printer. The, the point is not to try to micromanage where the individual cells go. It's a communications device. It's a translator. It's a... Um, it's a way to uh, convert your anatomical goals into the goals of the cellular collective that's going to try to build something. So where we are today in this field is this. We're, we're, we're very good at manipulating cells and molecules. In fact, all the exciting stuff in, in molecular medicine is about single molecule approaches, CRISPR, um, DNA, genomic editing, that kind of thing. So was, we're very good at this. But what we actually want is this. We actually want to be able to control large scale form and function. And we're a very long way away from that. And uh, I argue that the reason we're uh, far away from it is that we are still, biology is still where computer science was in the 40s and 50s. This is how we interact with life. Uh, what she's doing is um, she's reprogramming this computer by physically rewiring it. That's how you used to have to program. And of course, since then, the reason we have this information technology revolution is because we've realized that you don't always need to interact with things at the lowest level. Some things are reprogrammable. And uh, that means you can interact with them via inputs, stimuli, taking advantage of the native computational properties of the machine. You don't always have to rewire the hardware. Uh, bi biomedicine is, 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 still, is still here. So I think what we, uh, the next um, frontier of, uh, of, of, uh, of regenerative medicine and biology <clears throat> is to understand the native intelligence of the material that we're working with, because it's, uh, it's, it's not a simple machine.